So this is always green. How do I know if it's on or off? Kevin. Let's do um, call in the meeting to order for the Board of Review for April 26, 2021. Roll call, please. Trustee Brocious. Here. Trustee Susius. Here. Trustee Brunner. Trustee Kwiatkowski. Here. Trustee Hartman. Here. Trustee Kettlebader. Here. President Langfeld. Here. All right, has this meeting uh, been properly noticed it has okay so our next our next task is to select a chairperson and vice chairperson of the board of review do i have any nomination who's eligible anybody i nominate bill i nominate bill i second that all right any other nomination All in favor, say aye. 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 No, yours, Bill. <laughs> All right. Well, who needs to work on that? Um, okay. All right. So, verified members have met the mandatory training requirements specified in uh, Section 70.46.4 of the Census Statute. Um, we have vice president. So. Oh, yeah. oh, we need a vice, vice president. Vice Sorry. Right. Yep, you're right. So I uh, need a nomination for vice chairperson. I nominate Kevin. Do I have a second? A second. All right. Is there any other nominations for vice chairperson? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed uh, the same. All right. Now we'll go on to. A uh, verified member that has had mandatory training requirements, and we only need, I believe, one or one person that needs to have gone through training in the last two years. So uh, we had um, Bill Brocious and Michael Pomakowski. So. All right, very good. All right, uh, discuss an action to approve the minutes from the regular meeting held on June eighth, twenty twenty. Do I have a motion uh, to approve the minutes from the last board review meeting on June 8th, 2020? So moved. Second. OK. 
fairly of a motion in a second. Uh, any any, uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. Let it pass. Um, consider, are there, are there, is there a consideration for any request of waiver for board review hearing allowing property owner to appeal directly to the circuit court? We did not get any requests. Did not get any requests, okay. And so we're down to hearings. We don't have anyone for hearings right now. Uh, so we'll go on to number nine, report from the village assessor on assessment changes and ag use penalties. Sure, I will be happy to state that the 2021 assessment rule is completed. Uh, the last board revaluation was in 2018. So this year was a general maintenance year where we took a look at all of the new construction land splits, um, <clears throat> anything that was pretty much had a permanent out or changed in value. Uh, agricultural use penalties were attributed to the newer subdivision in the village. Um, and uh, I believe you guys would receive any information or notice on that a little bit later in the year. I know it goes from our office to the county and the county implies the agricultural use, and then I believe it's split between the county and the municipality. Um, <clears throat> and again, agricultural use penalties for any total land changing use to any other uh, classification. So when the farmland changes from tillable to residential, not only does the valuation change, but the developer receives a, a penalty or a, a way that the state is reclaiming value or lost tax base because it was an agricultural use at such a low rate for such a long time. Um, I don't recall the rates typically off the top of my head. I believe it's $900 roughly per acre, I believe, and then it's, it's it gives the changes. But uh, all changes are included in the 2021 assessment rule and they have been uh, provided to the county. Sure. Excellent. Thank you. I can tell you that the affidavit has been signed and I can turn over the 2021 assessment over to the clerk and you guys are welcome to inspect yep. it. And yep. it yep. Yes. Um, so right now we are just reviewing the book and waiting for anyone to come in and we have two hours. It's seven o'clock, we will call the meeting. So we can talk about, so, so the basic rules of the, the board review while we're in here uh, is that we cannot talk about official uh, uh, village business during the board review. Uh, we can talk about family, without anything you want to talk about, just can't talk about village business. Um, so with that, I think we'll just kind of put everything on pause until seven. Bobby does have lunch for us eventually. Just who wants it? Yeah, we'll pass it down. Oh, I love it. It's on my It's on the website. I was just doing it. Oh, it's on the website. I was just doing it. Oh, this is a thing in paper. It's on the website. I think it's a thing in paper. I was not trying to take your mind to that. Oh, it's so cool. This is cool. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, my like address. Yeah. Like, I don't know how it's put in there, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, I think it was first in, first out. Right. So, what was, what was the okay. first property oh, here? And it's the exact same thing. Airport Road. Maybe. Um, yep. It's, so, it's our company webpage, and then you can filter uh, to our clients uh, by county, and then you just see whatever the private road and whatever the point is. Or cross planes. <laughs> you said cottage crawl. <laughs> That's okay. Sure, sometimes you don't know where you are. <laughs> so property values have pretty much they they stayed flat this year for 2021 from 2020 because of the reassessment from 2020. Yep. So the we did not make market changes this year. Okay. Um, your assessments are based off the 2018 real estate market. Um, your level of assessment right now is about 94%. Um, 
Is that up or down from normal? That that is down. That means that the assessments are below set. No, I understand that, but from what where we have typically been, uh, do, you, do you know if that is? You're at ninety six last year. I made it. There was about a two percent adjustment. Going okay. To this year at ninety four. Um, what the Department of Revenue is going to make on economic changes going forward, I could not tell you. Um, we're all aware of what's occurring in the real estate market and the cost of, of new construction. So I, I, you know, the biggest difference between now and 2008 is that the cost of new construction has, has increased. So that's one of the big market changes. Um, If you believe that the real estate market's going to change more than 4% in one year, it's likely the Department of Revenue may bring you down to 90% or out of that 10% threshold. At this time, I, I couldn't tell you what they would do. The remedy would be just another revaluation, but it would be my recommendation is to do an interim market update. We just did a full revaluation here. I believe the, the records are accurate, um, and we just need to do the market. In a very general sense, are you seeing commercial property um, open up more, or is that still highly valued on the market as well? I'm going to say that commercial values have pretty much stayed safe and flat. Okay. Um, I think it's the best bet there. They have their own tenant issues right now. Right. Wisconsin Property Assessor Manuals tells us that we should not take the, the pandemic into consideration. Um, I, I haven't. Yeah, I, I would say commercial stuff stayed, stayed pretty flat. I haven't. I don't recall any sales that have that caught my mind or stuck out. For sure. Day. Okay, I was just curious. Uh, it was, it was a rough, rough year last year for, especially now with people working from home. But you know, we're looking. Our business is in Madison, and we're looking for new uh, property. Uh, we're going from. I mean, actually, we actually found one. We're going from about forty-five hundred square feet to about fifteen to twenty thousand square feet. Um, but we asked our landlord. You know, you would you wouldn't have a lot of property. Do you have any property available for us to develop work? So that's good news for them. Correct. Yeah. What is the typical reason someone would come to the board of review meeting to request a reassessment of the property? So if they feel that um, you know we send out everyone's property taxes at the beginning of the year. And so if they feel that their property taxes are not aligned, um, they have to come to us and say, our property taxes are not aligned, we want adjustment. But what they have to do is they have to show proof that it is out of alignment. So let's say, you know, their property taxes are $5,000 a year, let's say. And their neighbors have the same square footage, same style house, and their property taxes are three thousand dollars. So then, you know, they come over to us, say, okay, two thousand dollars more. We start looking at the evidence. They have to provide that evidence. Basically, this is kind of court for them, mm -hmm. and they have to provide evidence. If they provide enough evidence, uh, then we can make an adjustment. If we don't, then we turn them down. But typically, what they'll do is they'll go to our assessor first. And they'll say, hey, this is wrong. And the assessor and the property owner will typically figure it out before they come here. Gotcha. So is it atypical that they want their assessment to go up and taxes with it? No. No one wants their assessment to go up. Unless you're going to sell it in six months. <laughs> right. Then you certainly will. But, but, but most of the time, they're challenging the assessment of the. Gotcha. I think we did have someone a couple of years ago that called and wanted theirs raised. Do you remember that? That's fine. It's possible. I, I did yeah. it uh, probably, like, I, think I want to say 2000. I, I actually did it when we had that big increase. I, the comparables that I saw were not 
Stephen, you know, I'm trying to think of who our assessor was at with Stephen. What was Fred it? Haley. What was that? Haley Wendorf. Yeah. And Haley. Um, and I, I ended up getting it reduced. Oh, reading, yeah, reading I thought you were going to get your grades. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I, mine went, went up like, you know, that year everybody's went up, but mine went up like 80,000. And uh, that's a lot considering the land part was a very small portion of that. And we hadn't done anything to the property. So I ended up getting it reduced 26,000. I was able to show a comparable. And we had quite a few, a few years, probably that year, where a lot of people had refinanced even. So they actually had an appraisal showing the appraisal said their houses were 200 and our tax assessment said like 20 years, you know, what they're like. So we did a, one year, we had a lot of, a couple of years ago, I don't say we had a lot of just for that. I didn't see much of that one. I would imagine once we do the in house, where they go to every house and make that big jump, that's when. You should see a lot. And how often do you get seven years? Well, I think whenever you get below 90, you have to yeah, do it, right? it's recommended every five to seven years. Yeah. And then once you fall out of that 10% threshold, you have approximately five years to get back to compliance. And did, when was the last time we had that? 2018. Oh, so it was. It's really yep. So it's previous really to 2018, I believe the municipality was out of compliance and received their second. Second notice. Now, at that time, uh, your major class was commercial, was out of, out of line as well. So, at the revaluation, the commercial saw a large jump, and then the residential property saw a jump as well. So, that felt just kind of I mean, I think it's a good sign that nobody's complaining, honestly, that nobody's. Well, when you ever get a commercial guy that showed up, we want to I don't know if it's that nobody's complaining. It's just that they don't have the argument <laughs> yeah, to, that's true. to get it changed. <laughs> well, <laughs> and we just had we just finished the lawsuit, obviously, where right. yeah. <laughs> There's all the well, can't we'll pay for this. Well, no, but that's part of the assessment. Or okay. do you is that has that been buttoned up? Oh yeah, that's all done. That's, that's all. I mean, that's an example of where <laughs> there was an agreement and they went to circuit court for it or started that process. What did we find out? So we did find out. Oh, remember oh, we made that, that compromise. Oh, that's right. That's right. right. Yeah. I just want to know if we go. Yeah, there's a, no, yeah. There's a settlement. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's we, right. we paid on on the overpayment of taxes, and then yes. uh, it reflects in this. Last year's uh, this year's assessment role, uh, what that settlement amount is moving forward. Okay. Nick, did you have anyone contact you during uh, the open book session? Uh, the, the open book contact again was. Uh, the developer from uh, Horizon Investment Associates. So he's building in he's building in phases, and um, I, I adjusted the second phase of top four. This thing, uh, he's developing in phases. So you're saying is that come with the egg penalty? Is it going to keep it in ag then while it's being developed? Certain portions, certain phases. Because that's part of the requirement, right? Yep. Okay. And that's, that's what we talked about. So I, he, he received, I think it's 50 lots roughly, maybe. So he received 50 assessment notices from our oh. office. There. So then, rather than the activity, it's just all one egg. Um, so it was, uh, I think it was like 50, 60 acres, and then he was building in phase in phases. Um, phase one is going to continue, they're going to be valued at full market value, what those lots are selling for, right? 
And then the remainder phases, he probably doesn't have his roads going into, right. will still stay in agricultural typical farming. And then as he sells those lots and those into phase two, he moves those roads, that land will transition and use to residential. And then we will proceed to the full market value. So I kind of didn't understand earlier when you were talking about the bag penalty or what that was, or the bag movement. You were speaking about that earlier. Yeah. Um, so what does that mean? Sure. So that that forty acre piece of land that's all tillable is only going to be assessed at two hundred and fifty dollars. Why is that? Because the Wisconsin Farm Council develops those agricultural values every year based off of last year's production. And that value changes annually. Now, once that farmland changes classification from tillable or agricultural use to residential, there is a penalty of tied to it. So one acre of that lot because it's going from tillable to residential, the developer who changed it is going to receive an agricultural use penalty. And it would be the 900 bucks for, for changing the use. So it's a way for <clears throat> having agricultural production is a benefit. So it's a way for, I guess, the municipalities and, and the counties to receive some of that lost tax. So we have to pay $900 an acre. Yep. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I can I can pull it up here for you as well. What actually happened? Andy, congratulations, welcome aboard. I appreciate it. Would you pick the worst meeting of the year to come to? <laughs> 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 yeah, I would say the worst. That's not no, right. <laughs> maybe the least acid. How's that? And Doug knew better, so he's out of town, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah, a little bad time here. Like, right. <laughs> but regardless, welcome to yeah, Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Take some vacation time here in the summer. And All right. We do the kitchen. We've been nagging me to do that. You know, it's hard to find materials, so you better prepare a well in advance. Yeah. Well, we started out with a, a contractor, uh -huh. and that's just all the price on that. And then it, mm. I ended up being well and told to do a job. So are you gonna make them from scratch? No. So you're gonna like, you know, go gonna buy it, like go buy them and sell them. Yeah. The boxes in the front sell them one. Uh nope. So I'll have to assemble one. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I wouldn't be able to afford. I would just pay the down. contractor. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was gonna be on it. We have a sausage that goes around the kitchen. Of course. So then it's easier to align. Uh, yeah, she wanted to go all the way to the top, but yeah, there's, some, hear this, huh? there's some pipes hidden behind there inside. So what year was the home built? 77. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So, a lot of updating. Yeah. So, a lot of updating. Yeah, we were able to find something that was a reasonable price, and luckily we did because the market is crazy right now. We would have. Um,
You know, my son, he, he was having that problem, but he found someone that was selling the house to himself. You know, themselves. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. his uh, appraisal came in $5,000 over what he, he was the only person that put in a, an offer. Oh, right. If you're patient, yeah. you know, and yeah, it's, uh, he closes on uh, the fourth. Where is he? Where is he? Uh, Blooming Grove, just outside the city, city of Madison limits. Okay. On the, on the body side. Yeah, he's right on Cottage Grove and Sparker. Oh, There's sure. that development to the right there. Yeah, he's in there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I drove through it and, you know, it looked like a really nice neighborhood. People were walking, you know, the streets, there's not sidewalks now. So, yeah. Yeah, he got lucky, but he, he was being frustrated. I just kept telling him, be patient because. He was putting in over asking. Yeah. You know, there was one that was like 320, he put in for 340, and it ended up going for 380. Yeah. <laughs> it's all sounds right. It's in, it's it is. There's some of the words. There's one down at Glacier that went for 75,000 over asking. Did yeah. You see that one? And that was, they were asking already a lot. Oh. Yeah, when we were searching in town, we, we got the uh, almost every offer that put down. Yeah. So that's what makes me wonder about this. Like, will that, I mean, the appraisals are crazy, a lot of our appraising all. So, will that make a difference next year's taxes? Eventually. Yeah. It will eventually. Well, well yeah. that home sell. But again, you don't, you know, if all of a sudden interest rates start shooting up and houses, you know, start coming down or staying stable, right. it's all depends on the timing when we do the reevaluation. Yeah, you would think there's going to be a market correction. At some point. So, if you did fall out of compliance and say it went to 85% because the real estate market continues to be high, and you did fall out of compliance, you do have for five years. So, within that five years, if the market started to go back the other way, you fell back in within 10%, you would have no reason to go to the application. Other than just, just like the yeah, I don't think it's ever correct to look back. No. I don't see that. I'm going to turn off these mics. <laughs> Thank you. 
The official number is 1900, but I think we lost about 300 kids not going to take the place at all. They went to Edgewood or Jackson. But how many how many of them one story down? So yeah, we're doing the hybrid thing. So two days a week, we get it's funny for this day. Yeah, like, so when we physically can't together, we gave away most of our various services. Now, can't the building no more. But basically, that's not going to be our ability to Oops. Public instruction going. Looks good. Yeah. Good. And, uh, I mean, could you imagine giving kids the ability to graffiti their classrooms at will? And the kind of buildings that knock down so we can have a lot of pictures of drawings that are going on. Yeah, it's a source of tension in the building for sure. I, I, I was never mad about it. I think I feel we had the only other prospect high school. He said that the high school doesn't have problems. It's been a long time. And there's been an issue that there was. Oh, yeah. How many years ago did we start with the first edition? Because you remember there was a referendum on do we want a one big school or two small high school? No, I mean, I'm just referring to the title. No, but at that point in time, we're ready. That was a big edition right. at that oh, point in time. Yeah. That was where I was about at that point in time. And technically, they think it should say press wing middle school for three months before now, even though it's in house. Well, it's the district too. Yeah. C P A S. Oh no, the yeah, no, no. Yeah. But it is the district. But you know, Madison schools are the same way. You know, Shorewood, Fitchburg, they all feed into it. You know, they have their names on it. I, you know, I guess you know, I went to Madison last. That there were people from other villages, uh, cities that went there. You know. It's always part of that part of the school district Westlands. I don't know what you're saying, but we are part of the Milton Westland School District. Right. You live in that's the only high school we've got in the district. Yeah, yeah. you know, like us. Where's the physical area? Like a corona and you might have the power in and like the right. Yeah. 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 She tried it there. She got on the question in chambers. When she came, she realized that there's a huge debate about this and that there's a lot more to it than what we realized. I mean, it's a good program there. 
So she said, I mean, when she asked people, like, what, what do I need to know about the school district? That was a good thing. But there's still this movement versus wrestling when it comes to sports or when it comes to whatever. They feel like there's still this thing. So, so she got on the and she officially was like, no, I feel like I need to somehow get this, get this woman again. There's a fight. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, I'm going to get that question and get like all the three answers. It's like, like the fine bread. So, the egg burger. Did I say no? For a wrestler. Okay. <laughs> wrestler. <laughs> but no, really? The offensive line. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see the quarterback, the leading receiver, uh, the backup running back. They're all from from play. When they were trying to throw the schools here, that was the big thing. Like 14, they thought it could only go east to go west. Like they couldn't come this way. That's the big thing. Like, no, we won't go to the school. Yeah. No, in a couple of the sports, I remember, like, about, you know, like before a track meet or before volleyball, they had parties at people's houses. And I remember them going a couple of track points here. Well, we can't have our physical up there for the class to hurt. You know, like that was like, oh. Yeah, trying to get my colleagues to come out here for like a volleyball week was the biggest deal. Yeah. Oh. We didn't have a problem. Six or seven miles. I know, like, you guys know I'm going to that there. Right? I know. That's like, 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 yeah. yeah, I remember when the goals in soccer, we were always going to uh, Middleton, West Madison. It's, then again, the homes that we went to. But your house was the These homes were double ones. Yeah, they're hot. Yes. They're hot. I mean, you have to change the ceilings and then the second floor. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out that we need like a catchy name for the middle of Cross Points High School. This is too much. So I was thinking like Mac. Yeah. You say that, I think of Madison Aquatic Club. This is the night of So, Bobby, we got, we got one share already. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we can start going in and grabbing if you guys want dinner. Grab your sandwich and your stuff that you ordered. We have time. I'll take some time. Um, I know I'm very useful about the online order. I asked for your name, so I think they are. The rooms are from. Oh, all <laughs> here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Nick. See, that's for what, what land but value? No, see, I think you're looking at the personal property. That's what I was going to ask you. Uh, like well, in the back here, like yeah. you were supposed to support like twenty thousand dollars, twenty thousand seven hundred dollars for yep. furniture. And yes. Then, okay. So, so then, I think you had to, so then, how was the? My question was, why are you saying why? Because this is a personal property. Yep. Right. Yep. It's right. personal property. So their business has that personal property in there, and that's a self-reporting uh, lottery. So we send that to them, to their business. Usually their accountant <laughs> fills that out, and then it goes on the personal property roll. And they receive it. So personal property. Who's behind the village plus depot? Correct. So let me, a good way, some, what would personal property be? Soda, soda machines? That's All the beers, Bobby. Same thing. That's yours. Yep. And yep. Because it's property that's the owned, or the business owns. Like Tano's has a bunch of pizza ovens. Correct. And it's value to that building. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. personal property that they report. Yep. Now, some, some, some is, a, is, 
Some personal property is exempt. Um, I know that the state of Wisconsin is really trying to make a big push to eliminate personal property tax. So none of those are okay. nope. um, My most recent meeting I had at work, project manager meeting, SFL is uh, really making, the state's really making a push with the federal COVID money they received to eliminate the personal property tax. And they're going to make, the question is, what do you do with that lost tax base? So they're going to, basically, they're going to, with the COVID money, they're going to replace that lost tax revenue. Uh, I, 10 year, like a 10 year period, and then it's kind of evaluate. I know. They could replace Absolutely. I don't know that. I don't know the specific details other than that's what they're they're attempting to do to get rid of personal property tax and and re, um, replenish the tax base with with that. So then all that, you know, like I said, all that personal property stuff is it would be zero and our, I don't have to send a bladder and I don't have to talk to them and it's just completely gone off the assessment roll. So then my second question is though, so then coaches club as the building is in here as a separate assessment. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. See, so, so, so let me like go through the piece. How do you do that? How do you I mean PI must have a ton of positive things? PI is positive things. Okay. So so now they're going to be manufacturing. Now I, as the assessor, don't do manufacturing on the on the local assessment rule. Department of Revenue do manufacturing. Now, in order to be manufacturing, you have to apply to the state and get that classification. Now, a lot of these manufacturers are trying to get out of manufacturing because the way the current law is written, that machinery is exempt if it's on the local assessor's roll. But because they're manufacturers, it's ah, they're being tapped. Yeah, correct. So they have their own issues there, and you may see some more manufacturing appeals. I know last year they went up like three hundred percent. Manufacturing appeals, so. So oh, people who are in manufacturing are objecting to their value because of that law. Gotcha. So then, so since PI is manufacturing, do you even tax like you you don't even tax like the property or the building itself? I, I think just considered manufacturing. It's in a different world of its own. The whole thing is considered manufacturing, and the state of Wisconsin Department of Revenue <clears throat> has manufacturing divisions all over the state, they'll actually go out, develop the land value, the building value, and then provide it to the municipality. I, I believe it's June or July is their deadline. And I have nothing to do with that. So that is interesting. No, it'll, it'll be, a, it'll probably be um, like a zero value. Yeah, so and, then, something like that. and the class, this code will be three. So one is residential, two is commercial, um, three would three be. is manufacturing. So, that, so yeah. then Bobby would get that valuation from the state separately, and then she would assess their property taxes based on the valuation. That she made. Yep. So I don't even. I don't even know if Bobby even actually does anything with them. Um, no. No. Manufacturing. Yeah. I talked with my younger son. We might but go off. Yeah, yeah. uh, so, uh, you said plastic ingenuity. Uh, That's the farmer I want to ask. Yeah, so that, that assessed value, she never, so every year manufacturing change says it's 10 million. I don't see the 10 million. She doesn't see the 10 million. Um, they provide that to the county, and then the county just has it. So if you look at my assessment rule right now, it says zero value because they don't know the values yet. And then they just kind of. Yeah, correct. Correct. Um, so I could tell you. Yep. So your current equalizer manufacturing is about five million. Oh, okay. And that's what okay. it's worth in the building. So okay. that's what they value. All of the manufacturing. All the stuff. Yeah. Right. Yep. I got you. I'm just outside of Chase Bird. And, and then they'll have a personal property bill as well. Right. So that's just, oh, the equalizer. Right. That's just the, 
Yeah. Yep. Building in the land. Yep. So I'm just, I'm just, right, all. I'm just saying this five million dollars of manufacturing is not in my assessment role. Um, one that manufacturing role is completed, I, I believe, early June or late June or July. Um, manufacturers receive an assessment notice from the Department of Revenue, and then they can object. No. And then so it's a process correct. Process. Absolutely. Um, there is a there. Is, if you go to the Department of Revenue page, you can find the guide for owners, guide for manufacturers, guide for everyone as well, and it can be yeah, a quick no, read. I, agree. I, um, I don't know if I'll get into it now, but these are just like they you know, know my like and end up following so these are the personal property that they feel like sure that they swallow. And does that go and do that and do our property tax like that? Mm -hmm. into that equal yep. so yep. so yep. that's what I wanted to first get. Yep. Yeah. As does the numbers that come from the from the yeah, Yep, that's all part of your total assessed value. Um, so this this isn't this isn't assessed figures. This is equalized figures. So it, it kind of basically they're telling you value is four hundred and twenty million. Right. Um, if you're trying to that then that number determines yep. So here's my personal property. Uh, municipal assessed, I have 2.3. DOR value is about 2.4. And those are different ones. That's the DOR is the manufacturing one. Yep. This is this is this is not me. Yep. This would be your bar and all the bar stools and right, right. So as you can see, municipal assist value is at 396 million. DOR base is 417. So that that's that percent change. I was talking about is at 94 percent. Oh, right. So once that falls out of compliance, that's when you see the new value. And this does not include manufacturing, which is right here. So you basically, they basically say I, you have about five million manufacturing. So how do they compute this? They're just computing this. Oh, this is based off what homes do you are the do you are base value? Yep. And they they just make they just make annual adjustments. So as you can see, selling for four percent of the assessed value. So we're going to do that to the whole village. Yep. So here in the residential, they said amount of economic change from 2019 to 20 was about 2%. Right. So they said 2% change in real estate last year. And then manufacturing was about five. Commercial was about a, a negative one. Oh, that's when you said it was downstairs. Yeah. Medicare and unpaid one. It's coming up with okay, so uh, family yeah. basic plant. Yeah. And so then like yeah, since and our they have one, one that, 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 that they ran and it has a permit to go and look at that whole building. The 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 building. The so the 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 this building is worth this much. How much personal have in it to do this? Yep. And then what we do is we send them a personal property blotter. And it says, hey, you need to fill your new bit because we get the new business occupancy from the clerk. So we know there's a new business. We send them the blotter. They fill out what they have in equipment or supplies or furniture and fixtures. And then they report it back to us. And then we send a tax bill for that. Correct. Now they so it, for a gym may not be a great example, but it just comes to my mind. Um, they would have the option to have the personal property part of the real estate if they chose to. They said, "I, Mr. Assessor, I don't want to do personal property. 
value my building as if all of that equipment is going with it. Like if you're selling it. Yep, yep. So they have that opportunity. Um, another one would be grocery stores is a great example. Yeah. Because they could, you know, what's the grocery store building actually worth? And then what's on their personal property? Their freezer, the freezers. No. Yep. So it'd be like your, your freezers, your racking, cash registers. Yep. yep. All of that. Last year you said that like, like for houses because it's like if and like out of the three, like look inside the window. Sure. You said yeah. that if somebody does two of the three, then you get some really neat stuff. You'll probably consider a like reassessment of that correct if everything else. Yeah. Well, this is a different thing. Oh, and it's your interview because I want to start with somebody who's in their companies. It should be smart for us. Most of the areas I have a pretty good understanding. I do do really good. Uh, water heater, I, I don't touch. Now, air conditioner, if I have it on the, if I don't have it on the property record card, I'll add it. And it's like a $2,500 change. Um, the furnace, I typically don't make a valuation change if you've got a new furnace or a new AC. But if I, if my property record card is reflecting that the mechanicals are in fair condition, and you get a new one, I might move it to average yeah. or good because you, you, you kind of enhance it, right? I, I typically wouldn't make a direct change for that unless it's an overall rehab, like a big rehab project. Yeah, it's a big 100,000. I'm going to make an adjustment, but if that home right there just got a new furnace, I'm going to add it. I, I couldn't argue the thousand dollar value change. You know what I mean? But but we know at time of sale the guy would be oh well, I got a new furnace, you know. Well, my opinion on that is, well, I'm not going to, from the, what I would do as the assessor, I'm going to collect those permits and I'm going to add them to my database and I'll have, I'll have on record, oh, you got a new water heater in 2020. Oh, you got a new furnace. So that might make it help my decision later down the road. For, for Determ work. determining what kind of condition the property is in. But from the municipality standpoint, I don't think it would be hurt hurtful because you're requiring them to have a licensed professional do that. And then it's a fee that you, the municipality, gets to collect and it's revenue. I understand that's just like somebody's putting the water in the water. No, I get it. Yeah, it's just kind of like... I typically get that because they need an electrical cert, like an electrician certified person to put in the water heater, and some municipalities require that. So then I just get the building, kind of just keep it for. Is it good because it's provided? No, you would. Somebody, yeah, you know, somebody. Yeah, when I work at the mall, do three place the water heater, and then go down to the village hall and say. <laughs> sometimes sometimes depends on the building inspector and municipal requirements there has been some recent changes um, because if you're if you're the contract you're the homeowner and you're the contractor you can go in and you can change that water heater yourself but if you're going to hire someone to do it you typically want you want to know that they're a certified plumber um, but then the, the mother, yes. yeah, I understand what you're saying. Four yeah. and a half months. Wow. Fully paid, you know. And then come to the water heater. I don't know how many people register. Wow. 
Maybe it's still in some of this and like no, that's the way the world should be. What do you have to do? Make sure you have water to boil in it or yeah. I guess that would all fall under the municipality. Some some do that, some don't. For a water heater, yeah, absolutely. For green practices, I do receive those permits often again because I think that the electron has come in or the gas line. You know, you're involved with the gas or the electricity. Well, right, exactly. So, what would typically right. happen then? Homeowner calls the gas and furnace company. Hey, my furnace is out. I need a new one. I imagine that gas company or furnace company says, oh, All right, I'm going to bring this here. And depending on the municipality and knowing the ordinances, they may go and get that or they may not. Now, if see this is where the law changed recently because when i worked in shorewood milwaukee county if you didn't get that permit and your prop like at time of sale the building inspectors went in and they made sure everything was up to date and if they saw that you had a new water heater without getting a permit they find you triple the fee right, right. but that law has changed where they can no longer do that um, so then it would just, again, fall on municipal ordinances and then it'd be the heating company saying, hey, I don't want to get any trouble with the city or faulty work. I'm just going to go get my permit. Yeah. Right. Oh, great. Well, you answered my question. Now, like, that egg thing, I'm still confused about it. No, so I was going to say, I, I saved it right here. Because um, I did a little reading and it was like if it gets zoned forest and then, you know, then it goes through the It county, does. Like it. If it comes out of it. So, I was just so on this particular, uh, I didn't. Sorry. So the new subdivision had 47 acres converted, right? 47 acres is changing from agricultural to res. You go to Dane County, and if you're changing more than 30 acres, it's $472 per acre. If it's less than between 30 and 10, it's 708. And if it's less, it's 725 an acre. So that's what, or 944, excuse me. That's what the developer has to pay. Yep. Rezone. Yep. So what happened is 472 times 47 is $22,000. So at some point that developer is going to receive a agricultural use penalty for 22,000. And the developer is going to pay that to the county. And then that funds is split between the county and you, the municipality. So it's like just a penalty, it's just a fee they're paying to convert it. Yep, because they were because so undervalued. Yeah, you both for them to provide food and et cetera. No, it's yep. not. Okay. Thank you. That's that's what I thought it was, but it was just I just as you said penalty. Like, oh, a penalty. Uh, conversion fee is right. something you should better off calling it. Right. My first board yeah, review of the year, first day we could have it. So yeah, get, is, yeah I gotta get back into tune. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, really? Yeah, both Ethan and Eric.
Oh yeah. She was actually training a rookie. I thought uh, the Madison High School, they don't have a permanent, but they do them on, on certain days. They bring them in and get, I think the last time, uh, I think for two years ago, they had done that. They brought in either the waivers or the walk in through, but not every day. They just move it around. How many? I mean, we find Sandra.